Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here in TNO, the last years of Europe, in which we are taking a look at the free Kazakh clans, one of the nations that spawns once Tabariski's Holy Russian Empire falls apart. This is just one of the many nations that we will explore as we explore each nation. Now each of these countries do not have a focus tree, but they have unique events, which I would like to go through. Now technically I've already read through this one before, when I live streamed as Tabaritsky and you know made the Holy Russian Empire I already read this one but not everyone was able to attend the live stream so I'd rather just make a many shortish videos to explore what each nation has and we are of course the free Kazakh clans free or forever free the people who stood in the rubble of what was once their old village where there was once life and laughter now there was only silence and the remains of horrors long dead but the people were not here today to mourn the destruction of their lands and families the chemicals that had been lingering around the area of their old home had finally been cleared and the Kazakhs had returned to rebuild they had brought with them foodstuffs tools and lumber the people had survived the simmering hatred of holy russia as the sun rose over the aral sea they got to work for the dead wouldn't waste their time either and we have should be paid and which apparently we're doing some you know warlord stuff which is very weird but we have the National Spirits of Oil Crisis. We have the Kazakh State, which shows the construction speed, as well as Salted Earth, because, like I said, this is post Tabby Warlord era. It is what it is. And we're led by some Sultan guy, in epilogue, of course. Sultan. Sultan Akhmet Kozikov. But we've been raided. Of course, that's, that's pretty normal. It doesn't really matter to me. It doesn't really matter, since we're not going to be here for too long. But what never was made real. Standing on the banks of the Jacques Arctic filled Hanifa with a feeling that she hadn't experienced in a long time peace. For the first time in months, she felt like she could take a moment to just take a moment and breathe. The regime of the Mad Regent was gone. No Russians were coming to get, to conquer them again. For so long, war had been a constant as they fought each other, only to weaken themselves when the Russians had invaded, enslaved, and slaughtered them. They had never both been united or free before. Now, maybe that could change. The remaining families and clans alive had managed to come together, resolving to settle on the Jartics and survive, or Jartes. Others had soon followed or had found themselves arriving from the east. What had once been a few dozen survivors had turned into hundreds. Tents had been erected, routines established, and slowly they had begun to heal. There only remained the lingering question, what now? Their homes were destroyed, their lands poisoned, and their people slaughtered by the Russians, but they were now free. No regent, tyrants, or dictators controlling them. The clan leaders had started speaking, talking about starting something new. A new Kazakhstan, free, independent, whole, a new dawn from the nightmare they had emerged from. There were still threats. Some of those who had come from West had warned of Kazakhs who were led by butchers, who emulated the Mad Regent and its propensity to slaughter. However, Hanifa was surprisingly calm, as were many others. Those people were driven by rage and hate, much like the Regency had been. It was unsustainable, and like the Holy Russian Empire, it would destroy itself in time, and when it did, a new free Kazakhstan would rise. An ideal of hope. Oh, they give some of the slaughter just because of the warlord stuff. That's fine. That's fine. Whatever. Doesn't really matter. We have a lot of manpower. But, <clears throat> we should have a new event very soon, in which we will have to fight the flames of hate. Ada's hands remain steady as she places a shell in the mortar tube. Muscle memory from hundreds of repetitions saved her despite her nervousness of using live materials, finally. She finished and fired it away. She was rewarded with the sight of an explosion in a short distance away. She let out a sigh of relief, proud of herself for managing it in the live fire exercise. A number of other explosions were founded, as the other women in her unit did the same. Again, Officer Rustamov ordered. He was an old veteran of the Kazakh Red Army, a man missing an eye and a with a patchy beard. He had been heavily involved in drilling the militia units he had been formed in the recent weeks. The genocidal men to the West, and the concern that were emerged from the remnants of Russia may attempt to reclaim Kazakhstan had driven the need to have a fighting force, even had to be built from the ground up. There was no shortage of volunteers. And thanks to the amount of weapons and ordnance that had been left behind or abandoned by the Russians, they didn't have to worry about supplies. It wasn't enough for an army, but it was enough for them. She barely knew how to fire a gun, but the vivid memories of the Russians invading and being unable to fight back had instilled in her a desire to never be helpless again. If there was ever another army that marched upon them, be they from the west or the north, at least she'd die fighting back. Twilight turned the sky orange, and after a few more hours of drills, they were sufficiently tired. Rustamov ordered them to stop. Drills are done for the day. Take a rest. You've earned it. Ada and the rest of the women smiled. Rustamov was tight-lipped with his compliments, so hearing one was gratifying. Yes, sir, she brought up a hand in a salute, echoed by the others, and turned to leave, chatting with each other, the rifles slung over their shoulders. And when she glanced back, she swore she saw him smile. Very nice. Very, very nice. And we, of course, have Salted Earth, which is really bad, but oh my goodness, that's not very good. We can't even build anything. That's okay. Up next, and we should have Scorched Earth and Shattered Vines. Nothing grows here anymore. The earth has become callous, blistered, grotesque. Not even the most stubborn of weeds can take root. Hills roll in a similar wreathing agony, scattered with shocks and scars of gaunt trees. Putrid air clouds the ground and cling 
clings tight to the direction of the wind. If one were to continue their journey, they might find the remains of a granary, one some to vast quantities of golden wheat, its soft color as summer sun. All carefully deposited by a farmer's tough and hands, a home would be close by, it would have been filled with the things that this farmer loved in the world. Now it too stands abandoned, inhabited by nothing but the same unrelenting toxic atmosphere. Few refugees can be sustained. Those that do cling to life in the carcasses of, of old towns, with supplies dwindling and fears rising, may even insist come, or instead come to embrace a nomadic life. Reliving the customs of the past, with hardened skin they return to the earth, scraping away whatever they can find. These people spend their days in a shock, with nothing to sustain their future, but their nation prevails as dim a spirit haunting its hollow lands. Though the plagues, brightened by the invaders, tore their lands apart, they managed to persist. Though their muscles ache and minds yearn to escape, they persist. And the death of the old, a new life emerges, mirroring what that which came long before. And so they shall persist. This land was not home to Kazakhs alone. Even since before the vile recent deluge swept the ground bare, there have been Russians living alongside them. Though they might have not have always been peaceful, they had grown accustomed to each other's existence. The Russians had been as much victims as indiscriminate carnage as the Kazakhs. They had been strewn far across the steppes, cut off from the past, all those who had survived at least. Loss was as arbitrary throughout the survivors as the marauders from beyond the border had been. It was impossible to find a group that had not been. All flesh is grass. And? Uprooted. This land was not home to Kazakhs alone. Ever since before the recent vile deluge swept the ground bare, there had been Russians living alongside the natives. Though the relationship had far been far harmonious at best, they had grown accustomed, if weary, to each other's existence, merely mutually accepting of their presence. Of course, this delicate condition was doomed to not last. The Russians have been as much victims of the indiscriminate carnage as the Kazakhs, despite the ravings of those who had caused the carnage. Everyone had been strewn throughout the steppes, cut off from the past, and held hostage by the present, all those who had survived at least. These few were left were now subjugated by the terrible specter of the future. Small bands of refugees are all that remains of the Russian communities. They hobble across the landscape in the same way their Kazakh neighbors do now. However, their lives are plagued by constant uncertainty, worse even than that of the Kazakhs. They can never be they can never tell where they will be welcome, or if another band mistakes them as the enemy. The relentless anxiety of the land hounds them, with little left to choose. One by one they settle down in attempts to live off the land. Their new ways of life, melting into the pastoralist culture of the Kazakhs. Soon the ways of these two people will be indistinguishable, and through this, in spite of all they've endured, they will live on. The Russia will not be spared or separated from the Russians. What was once changeable is now set in stone. Of what was gleamed, gleaming with possibilities, none remain. We can only move on and let fate dictate the rest, in which now that gives us plus one to the epilogue. But... Like I said earlier, I've already read this before, but if you would like to check out the live stream that I did playing as Tabriski to get to this point, I, that'll be the first link in the description, but that is it for the content for the free Kazakh clans, and throughout this I will be going through every single nation that spawns from my post-tabby Holy Russian Empire. If you liked the video though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you in another video. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.